What is up, everybody? My name is Derek Farnsworth. I go by Notorious, uh, both across the DFS sites and on here on Roto Grinders. Uh, we are here to talk about my two PGA DFS wins over the last couple of weeks. As far as what I do on Roto Grinders, I provide content for pretty much all the sports. Uh, I do football, basketball, baseball, and golf. Keeps me busy throughout the year. I won the $44 club twirl on DraftKings. Uh, last week for $50,000 and then I won it again this week for a hundred thousand dollars and the crazy thing about that is I've never had a large field GPP win um, Ever in my DFS career, you know, I've won a lot of uh, smaller Entry higher buy-in type of tournaments, you know the Thunderdome those kind of things um, So it wasn't my first hundred K win, uh, but it was my first large field GPP win and to be able to do it two weeks in a row is pretty crazy obviously you have to be very fortunate uh, for that to happen once let alone in back-to-back -back weeks i think you know the odds of that happening are incredibly low they're basically zero so uh, i'm very happy i'm very fortunate and um yeah looking forward to keeping this streak rolling if we can i made 100 lineups uh, last week uh, using the uh lineup builder here on roto grinders and then i made 96 lineups uh this week i usually do around 100 the only reason i didn't do 100 is after i entered uh you know all of my uh, exposure percentages on lineup HQ and then uh, you know I lowered my total aggregate um, projected ownership that I wanted for my team I lowered it to around 80 to 85 percent that's typically what I said to that um, and then you know once I finalized my player pool I ran the lineup builder and it only sped out 96 lineups just because uh, the limitations that I had set on um, both the aggregate ownership and the I like to leave some money on the table as well So I love all those features, um, you know on our lineup builder and that's kind of why it spit out only 96 instead of 100 uh, But the 96 worked. didn't even need those last four uh, Tell us about your lineup. Uh, how did you go with the golfers that you selected? Uh, this is a little tougher in an MME setting because you know, I'm obviously using the lineup builder So I didn't uh, hand make these lineups uh, funny thing about that is when they first started doing the uh, millionaire makers for DraftKings uh, PGA, you know, I, we didn't have lineup builders back then. We didn't have optimizers, so I was building all of them by hand. And I think it took me like eight hours to build, you know, 100 lineups or whatever it was the very first one. And um, yeah, I mean, if you don't finish high in that, you're basically uh, gonna be losing. So uh, after that, I didn't really enter any more, you know, large field stuff until we uh, had some lineup builders around the industry and. Now it's a part of my weekly uh, process. Um, so yeah, that's how many I made. Um, as far as the golfer selection process, um, I'm constantly changing the way I approach uh, a certain slate. Um, I think that should be something that we all do. We definitely want to get a process and stick to it, but we should always look to improve that process as well. So my process as of you know, right now, um, I like to build two main lineups a week that I use into pretty much all entries. So I'll use it into you know, the big tournaments, I'll use it into, you know, the three maxes, the single entries, I'll put in some double ups, um, three mans, head to heads, all that. So I'll make two lineups there, typically a core of two to four golfers um, that I use in both of those lineups. Uh, and these are my favorite plays of the week. So, uh, you know, I'll have two to four golfers that I have 100% exposure to in those two lineups, and then I'll mix in the other two to four um, of the different golfers, uh, you know, that I, that I like that week. And then that'll make up the bulk of my bankroll that's in play. And then I will turn to MME builds. And uh, from there, I usually make around 100 lineups, depends on the week uh, for the millionaire makers. I will be up in it to around 150 for the majors. But yeah, so uh, as far as the type of golfers that I go with um, in my MME builds, I typically like to lower my player pool to around, you know, 35 golfers or so. You know, I don't have a strict number. Um, it kind of depends on my strategy for the week. Uh, two weeks ago when I won the 50K, I, I hit the lock button on Jordan Spieth. Um, and so hitting the lock button on a player gives you so much um, leverage on the field that uh, you can afford to increase your player pool a little bit. So that last week I had a little bit more golfers. Um, so I was able to get you know more exposure to Kevin Na and some of those other cheap guys. Um, I think I, instead of doing 35, I think I did around 40. And I downed it a little bit from 10 to 15 to five to 10% for some of those cheaper guys because I'd already hit the lock button on Jordan Speed, and then when you have a larger player pool, you're obviously going to have uh, you know less exposure to some of those golfers. And then uh, this week, uh, I I think I was around 45% on Adam Scott, Hideki Matsuyama, Matt Kuchar. Matt Kuchar ended up missing the cut, so I thought it was going to hurt me. But um, you know, sometimes in those MME builds, you just need that one lineup um, to really play well. So I had a couple up there. 
um, towards the weekend, but I really only had two six to six lineups through and one of them uh, was able to hold the lead. So uh, pretty fun. Nothing like that Sunday sweat, especially when your golfers play well. Um, it's incredible. So I typically make two lineups and I do my MME builds. As far as, you know, hedging off of my lineups, you know, a lot of people will make a main lineup and then they'll kind of build their tournament lineups off of that. So if they have you know, let's say uh, Tiger Woods in their main lineup. Then in their tournament lineups, they'll look to avoid Tiger Woods um, just so they have some head, natural hedging against each other. But me, I'm a constant tinkerer. It's uh, it's pretty bad. It's been that way uh, throughout my DFS career. It doesn't matter what sport it is. Um, I'm, al I'm always looking to tinker and make my lineups better up until lineups lock. Um, so I don't use any hedges. Uh, I'll build my MME lineups first um, and get those out there. Uh, you know, I'll do the CSV and all that. And I won't change that unless there's, you know, a withdrawal or something like that um, or big news that's going to affect anything. And then since I'm obviously uh, going to be tinkering with those other two lineups, uh, it doesn't really make sense to hedge it with my MME builds because if I tinker and change something, then it would obviously hurt um, my overall exposure to those golfers in my MME builds. So I don't really uh, use hedges. I kind of just roll with it um, and go from there. If you've paid attention to any of my uh, content here on Rotor Grinders, you know that I have a model for baseball, for basketball, for football, for golf, and for the Euro Tour. And uh, what I like to do, I mean, I like to build my own spreadsheets. Um, I've always been somebody that likes to trust, you know, my work over someone else's. Um, so that's why I kind of make up my own models, but I definitely couldn't have done this without the awesome uh, lineup builder on Roto Grinders. Uh, lineup HQ is just an awesome, awesome page. Um, and you guys should be taking advantage of that, whether you are premium members or just, uh, you know, regular members. Uh, I believe you can use that for free. Uh, not all of the uh, features are available if you're not a premium member, but um, yeah, it's an awesome tool. You can uh, set your min and max uh, player exposures. You can set, you know, what, percentage you want your team to be optimal so uh, if you put zero percent it's going to run the most optimal based on your projections and uh, it's pretty easy to upload your projections i do that each and every week um, you just download a little template uh, you put your projections in there you upload it and they're right there in lineup hq for you um, so uh, when it comes to the optimal percentage i typically set mine between 20 and 30 percent you know i don't want it to run straight optimally based on my projections i also want uh, some variability mix in there uh, especially in a sport like golf, uh, I'll definitely up that a little bit. Then you have your, you know, your uh, total aggregate percentage that you want for a lineup. We typically don't see um, a lot of chalk winning these uh, big tournaments. Um, I, I like to set my aggregate max ownership at 85%, um, and then we have some of the best ownership projections in the business. So definitely like to rely on those quite a bit um, when I'm deciding if I want to go overweight or underweight on certain golfers. Okay, so you also have your number of unique players. Um, I like to set this around three. Um, I don't mind going one if you like a really tight core and you just want to, you know, go from there. I don't mind doing one. I typically don't do higher than three just because it's hard to make a lot of lineups. Um, they're going to have that many different players each. Uh, and then you also have your number of lineups uh, to produce. You set that. You uh, set your range of outcomes. Your uh, total lineup ship, lineup ownership percentage, which is always cool. Your max exposure. Um, I typically don't go over around 40 to 45 percent for one golfer unless it's uh, you know a unique situation like it was last week with Jordan Spieth. I just love the spot for him. Um, he was rounding into form, and not a lot of people were talking about him. So uh, I hit the lock button on him. Uh, and then your salary. You definitely want to leave some money on the table if you are doing these uh, large build tournaments uh, for PGA DFS. I automatically put it at 49,900 um, and then uh, typically do the lower end around 49,2, 49, 49,3. Um, you know, the optimal lineup typically, you know, leaves a lot of money on the table, but it's sometimes hard to get to that optimal lineup. So uh, I like to spend most of my cap. So I typically don't leave more than seven or $800 on the table, but um, the larger the field, the more likely that it is uh, that you need to leave even more money on the table. You don't want to create duplicate lineups and uh, that's a great way to do it. And then uh, doing your max aggregate ownership is also a great way to avoid uh, getting duped. If I had the, uh, you know, the perfect recipe, then uh, I would be winning every single night. There are a lot of ups and downs in DFS, um, you know, even the best of the best, you know, they have their cold streaks and that's just something you got to live with. Um, it kind of makes you appreciate the wins even more. But I think that uh, sticking to a process and always looking to improve that process is going to help anyone. Um, if you know that it works and if you know that it works for you, then I think um, 
that's probably the best advice that I can give. Uh, try not to chase your losses. That's one of the hardest things in DFS. You know, you lose two nights in a row, and then so the next night you feel obligated to play more to try to win back those losses, and that's just not how uh, you're going to be profitable long term. You know, we've seen a lot, a lot of good DFS players, uh, you know, go bank, not bankrupt, but uh, whatever it's called. <laughs> when you when you go out of poker, um, you know, lose all your bankroll just because uh, you don't have good bankroll management. So. Uh, you definitely want to be careful of uh, you know not chasing your losses and uh, just stick to your process and always look to improve it. The game is constantly changing, um, and so yeah, uh, that would be my best piece of advice. I would also recommend uh, trying to figure out what type of player you are. There are some guys in the industry that make one lineup a week and they are very good at it. Um, there's some lineup or some players that make 300 lineups a week and they're very good at that. Uh, just know what type of player you are. Uh, and then kind of go from there. Uh, personally, I used to be a one lineup type of guy. I still am for a lot of the sports, but for uh, PGA DFS, now I make two main lineups and then I also make, you know, 100 MME lineups a week. So uh, my game is constantly changing. Uh, as I mentioned, I think yours should as well. Uh, contest selection is always important. Um, you can't really, there's not much you can do when you're chasing the big tournaments, you know, the club twirl, the, the millionaire maker, stuff like that. And in terms of payout structure, there's not really a lot of alternatives. So uh, you can't really do much for that. But all your other smaller tournaments, your three maxes, your single entries, um, download the RG extension for your browser, and then you can easily see the rake. You can see uh, what percentage of the prize pool is going to first place, going to the top 10. You can see what the min cash is. I typically like to see uh, tournaments where uh, first place gets you know less than 20% of the total prize pool. I typically like to see uh, rake, you know, as low as possible. I typically like to see the min cash be 2x. Um, so yeah, I, I typically try to get as much um, entries into those tournaments that uh, have good power structures and have good rake as I can, and then uh, you know leave the higher rake stuff to where if, if I just have to enter more lineups or whatever the case may be. Um, and then ob obviously uh, my final piece of advice is going to be to reach out to you know different experts across the industry. You're not going to get responses from all of them, but if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, I always try to uh, help anyone that I can, whether you want to reach out to me on Twitter or uh, on here on Rotogrinders. You can just click on my profile, Rotogrinders, click uh, send me a private message. And I try to check those, you know, once or twice uh, a month and then uh, respond to as many as I can, whether it be strategy related. Um, typically can't answer like weekly questions about start sit. Um, don't really get to those as often as I would like to, but um, strategy questions, I'm always down to uh, answer uh, those when I can. And then uh, if you want to send me a message on Twitter, that's great as well. Uh, my handle is RG underscore Notorious. So uh, yeah, reach out to your favorite experts. Uh, be careful of having content overload each and every week. Um, you know, if you listen to 50 podcasts a week, uh, you know, it's kind of hard. Everything just kind of jumbles together. And then you don't really know, uh, you know, who to trust. You know, you want to get exposure to everyone because you're listening to so many different pieces of content that uh, you hear every single golfer's name mentioned. And then you say, oh, this guy liked him and he liked him and he liked him. And then uh, your player pool just continues to grow. And uh, you kind of got to have a limited uh, player pool if you want to have uh, success in these big tournaments uh so that'll do it i uh, appreciate you watching my little q a hopefully you pick something up from it uh if you have any questions just let me know like i said um yeah it's fun it's a good time to be alive uh so yeah that can get out of here see you guys hey thanks for checking out our videos if you want more expert advice on DraftKings, FanDuel, or any other daily fantasy sports make sure you check out the current videos playlist